had another one of those dreams. I woke myself up at 2.47 this morning. Oh, it was so real. What was your dream? I don't know if you want to hear it. You wouldn't like it. They say if you tell your dream, it won't come true. Well, it was morning. I came down into the kitchen. It was Saturday morning, just like today. Except you weren't up yet. The sun was shining in really bright. And I could see my shadow. It was so bright and thick. Well, bright's kind of a funny word to use to describe a shadow, isn't it? So it's thick. Anyhow, I went to the fridge. I looked inside. I saw a plate of deviled eggs. I was delighted. I was going to have lunch at 7 o'clock in the morning. I peel back the saran wrap, and suddenly the phone rings. I dash for it because I didn't want to wake you up. And this is the scary part. I pick up the phone, and it's Trisha. She said only one word. Dad. And I said, Trish, why are you calling so early, hon? Your mom's still in the sack. And then there was no response. I thought maybe we'd been cut off or something. And then she started whispering and whimpering and making these sounds like least or least. And in my dream, I knew that she was leading the first syllable and what she really meant was police. And I said, what about the police? And again, no response. And I was getting so upset that I just wanted to yell at her. But then I heard as clear as a bell, the word killed that there had been an accident and that Hello? Yes, he is. Hello? Hey Frank, how's it going? You look so damn good. You only turn 50 once. Mm -hmm. So tell me, which of these ties do you prefer? The one on the left. Look, I didn't mean to upset you about this hokey train. You seemed like you're... Harvey! It's fine. What time is Frank supposed to get here? Hopefully any minute now. You don't mind that he joins us tonight, do you? I gotta tell you, Frank. Expo 86 changed everything. It set up such a profitable channel of positive trading. God, those truly were the golden days. This makes you think how fragile everything is. Mm -hmm. No, but... It's the nature of the game. It's the excitement. You never knew what would be profitable. Set you for life. That's for sure. Well, what can I say? The sales floor is suffering without you. Happy birthday, Harvey. One more drink for Harvey and one for the road for me. Can we talk later? Yeah, sure. What, what do you want to talk about? We need to discuss our living arrangements. We need to talk to Harvey. It's just the right thing to do. Well, this is a bit sudden. Have you talked to your lawyer? Have you got your paperwork going? I know he's a good man, but I just can't wait for him to die of old age. Well, that's a bit harsh. So this dream I had, I never finished telling it to you. Like you were so goddamn interested in hearing it. Trish had called to tell me that you had been killed in a car accident. And Frank was driving. I figured the police had called her to contact the next of kin. It was funny, well, it was funny to me that I'd never wondered in the first place why the fuck you were driving around with Frank in the middle of the night. I woke up, Janet. When I woke up, all I wanted to do was hold you. But we don't sleep in the same bed anymore. I 
I need you to come over. He knows. I don't care. I need your support on this. Okay. Come in through the kitchen door. Wait a couple hours? He must have heard us. We should have been more careful. You know what? We're just being paranoid. Okay, we're about to tear this guy's life apart. What is that? Jesus fucking Christ, Janet! We might need it. No, we don't need it! Get rid of the fucking thing! It's crazy to bring that in the equation! I had to get it before he did. You don't know him like I do. Okay, this is out of control. It has gone too far and it ends tonight. He's sleeping in the guest room, right? No. He's sleeping in our bedroom tonight. Frank. Be careful. Harvey? Harvey? Anything was? I was willing to live with her. Why? Because I love you so, so much. You broke my heart. Oh, you broke my heart. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> What? 